Welcome back to Something Ominous. This is your host, Jessica. And I'm Karina. And you're listening to episode three. How exciting! I know. We made it to the third episode. And guess what? We found out what the music box was. It was my dryer. <laughs> <laughs> So I have one of those electric dryers that whenever it stops, it does a little... (laughs) And that's what was sounding off. I was looking everywhere and I kept telling Karina, I was like, no, I heard it over here to the right. And then I see them folding clothes and I'm like, wait, does your dryer make a noise? (laughs) Yeah. And I totally forgot that we were drying clothes. But yeah, I'm glad. No, my house is not haunted. I don't have a music box. It was a dryer. She definitely slept good that night. I did. I did. I was worried for for a moment there. All right, Gary. So who's going first? You can go first since I went first last time. That's very true. I'm so excited for today's episode, though. I hope you're ready. I am ready. Before I start, I'm going to ask you a few questions or just one question. Okay. So does this ever happen to you? You're home alone or at work, but you know you're by yourself in the room. You're watching TV, eating or working on your work notes, whatever it is. When all of a sudden you see a black shadow from the side of your eyes, just like swoosh, passes by. A random movement. You just, you can't tell what it is, but you know it's a black shadow. And you remember, you're home alone. You can't explain it. There's nothing there, so you ignore it. But then it happens again. You try to find the explanation to it. Is it the shadow of a passing car? The reflection of the light? Anything to bring you a peace of mind? Dude, no. That that has not happened to me. No? Okay, so am I crazy? Because I'm about to talk about the shadow people. Oh my gosh. (laughs) I am not ready for this one. I'm like picturing everything while you're saying it. I'm like, no, no. It's never happened where you're sitting down and you just see like someone peeking around the corner of your eye. Maybe. I feel like, I don't know if I've seen it, but I feel it. Does that make sense? Yes. Like Like, you feel like something behind you. Yeah. Like let's say I'm watching TV. And even though on the corner of my eye, I can't see movement, but I feel watched. And I feel like if I look, I could probably see it. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. 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 Uh, I see, I mean, I've seen it several times (gasps) where I'm uh, working and then I feel and see something beside me and I'll turn and look and there's no one there. It hasn't happened at the new studio, but Mm -hmm. it's happened at other places where I worked at Mm -hmm. and I'm constantly turning. I wanted to look into the shadow people phenomena. So shadow people are considered many different beings. They're also known as a shadow figure where a black mass is described. It is the perception of a patch of shadow as a living humanoid figure. Believers sometimes interpret these beings as the presence of a spirit or other entities. It's believed that these human-like shadows come from different parts of the world. So some people believe that they're interdimensional beings, while others believe they have connections with aliens. Sorry. (laughs) Aliens. I know. I know. I know. I I thought the same thing. But as I kept reading, I was like, "Mm, I could believe it. You'll see. You'll see. But skeptics and scientists believe that it's just a figment of our imagination. This is why I need to go get checked. (laughs) (laughs) When seen, they're described to be in the shape of a black silhouette. They can be tall or short, wearing a cloak and a hat. Some reports have described them with glowing red eyes. Others describe a black shadow flickering in and out of their peripheral view, which is what I like what I see Mm -hmm. every now and then. When we think of shadow people, we usually correlate them with a menacing vibe that seems to feed off of people's fears. Something kind of demonic. So there are five types of shadow people. You have your positive shadows, negative shadows, red eyed shadows, hooded shadows, and the hat man. Your positive shadows are your passing by shadows. They are not evil. They kind of just mind their business and you may not feel any negative vibes from them. Your negative shadows are the shadows that lurk around and make you feel a little uneasy, which is what I think you which may I feel. Which feel like what I feel. You just don't turn to see. Mm-hmm. But then you may just feel a spirit. Yeah, like something present. Because I feel like shadows will, like they kind of Want you to know that they're there. Yeah, I feel like they would make themselves known. Like they would yeah. be in a place where you're like, I see. Yeah, especially if you feel the negative, mm-hmm. they're going to want you to look at them. Your red eye shadows have blazing red eyes and they do like to feed off of your fear. 
And then the hooded shadows, they're dressed like an ancient monk. Some people sense a deep rage emanating from their hood. Then you have the hat man. He's described wearing old time business clothing with a fedora. Shadow people date back from ancient history. They're found in legends of different cultures from many years ago. Back in ancient Sumer, there are accounts of Alu. Alu is considered to be a demon, and the way he appears is very similar to the way shadow people appear to us nowadays. They were described as shadowy figures with no facial features and would hover over you at night. So I kind of think of like sleep paralysis Mm -hmm. when it comes to this. In Jewish lore, there's a shadow of death. They believe that there are shadows or malevolent spirits that can harm you. Other cultures may know them by a different name, but the description is the same. And speaking of shadow of death, like during the Vietnam War, there's a group of indigenous known as the Hmong people. They were forced to immigrate to the United States. Once settled, there were reports of Hmong men suddenly dying in their sleep. The deaths were unexpected and mysterious that doctors couldn't find a cause of death. Autopsies were inconclusive. Not being able to find a cause of death, they named their death sudden, unexpected, nocturnal death syndrome. In Hmong religion, they believe that there are dangerous night spirits. Practicing their rituals, prayers, and ceremonies keeps the night spirits away. Since they weren't in their country and working odd hours of the day in the United States, they weren't able to practice their religion like they used to back at home. So they believe that the night spirits were causing these deaths by taking their souls as they slept. Choctaw Nation has the Nalusa Chido, which is known to them as a demonic entity. They believe that if you have negative thoughts, this would attract it to you. It'll creep inside you and eat your soul. Hikaria Apache believe differently. They believe that if the shadow person, who is really a spirit, sees you, it attaches to you for life and is your regular companion. Encounters with shadows are compared to sleep paralysis. So people have reported feeling like they're being held down, a tightness gripping their chest as if a person was laying on top of them and having trouble breathing. This feeling is gone once the shadow disappears. So my mom was talking to me about this because I told her about the story. Mm -hmm. And she was like, in Spanish, they say, se me subió el muerto. So she was telling me that this lady, it's not funny. I don't know why I'm laughing. (laughs) <laughs> but she was, saying, she was saying that this lady passed away and this lady owed her money and that she kept asking her for the money. The lady never paid her back. So she ended up passing away. And she said that one day she was asleep and she felt someone getting on top of her and like choking her and she couldn't wake up. She couldn't scream. She couldn't do anything. And that she started praying and it went away. So then I asked if she saw like a person, a shadow, a spirit. She's like, I don't know. I was too scared to open my eyes. But I wanted to know if you wanted to talk about your story. I can talk about it, but I'm not sure. Now that I heard you talking about a shadow person with red eyes, literally the first thought that came to my mind was, was that what I saw? But I'm not really sure what it was. I remember you said you saw like a shadow in the corner of your room. Yeah. Because they don't necessarily have red eyes. Mm -hmm. But I know... That the shadow was crouched down. Does that make Mm -hmm. sense? Mm -hmm. So I'm not really sure. Like whenever I picture a shadow person, I picture a person just standing like straight still. But I I know that whatever was in the corner of the room was crouched. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it could be anything. Because you can see them crouch. You can see them. It it doesn't have to be like like an actual solid black. Because you can even see like a black mist. There's Mm -hmm. many different encounters. Okay, Okay, yeah. I hadn't thought. I hadn't thought about that. Uh, But basically, I know people are listening like, what? (laughs) You saw what? Um, Basically, last time I talked about the Insidious movie. And I feel like I got very, I don't know, I I feel like it impacted me a lot. And so after I watched the movie, honestly, for about two weeks straight, I could not sleep. And I kept waking up at the same time every night, which was at three in the morning. I do think a lot of it was my subconscious waking me up at that time because I was so scared of it. So, so yeah, so every night I was waking up at three in the morning and then there was something that I would say every night to get myself to calm down and go back to sleep, which was God is with me. God is with me. God is with me. And I would just repeat that, repeat that until I would fall asleep. So there was one night where 
I also fell asleep very scared. I wake up in the middle of the night and I hear my phone go off. But I'm like, I'm not going to check it because I don't want to see the time. So I'm I'm hiding, hiding under the covers and I'm like, just go to sleep, go to sleep. And then I'm like, God is with me. God is with me. And I start feeling that que se me subió el muerto. Like I start feeling that sleep paralysis. Like I can't move. I feel the tightness in my chest. Like something's heavy. And at that time I slept with my sister. Like we had the twin beds and we slept one in each um, bed. And so I'm like whispering her name and I'm like, Lily, Lily, Lily. She didn't say anything. So I'm like, oh, she's asleep. And then I start saying it in my head. I'm like, God is with me. God is with me. God is with me. And when I open my eyes, I could see like right in front of me was a door and to the left was a corner and I saw something crouched. I I would say it was like a shadow person or a creature, I'm not sure, but in a very, very like deep, almost demonic voice, I heard, no, he's not. No, he's and not. Yes. <laughs> something like that. And oh my gosh, it just felt like I just, my blood was like cold and... Oh, it was you like the worst tingles ever. Over your body. Yeah, just like those tingles and dude, this entire time, I didn't realize that it got on top of you. Yeah, because I remember you telling me the story, and I thought that when you heard "No, it's not" or "No, no, he's not," that you heard it by your ear, but I never realized that he or you had the sensation of it being on top of you. Yeah. Yeah. I've had the sensation of something being on top of me. And the no, he's not was very loud. So did Lily ever wake up? Because I want to say she also has like her part. She told me she did. Like I asked her and apparently she heard me saying Lily, Lily, but she was scared because she said that she it's almost like she knew that I was like going through something. <gasps> no, I didn't yeah. know that part. Yeah. And I think she was scared, too. So she was like, let me just go back to sleep. Yeah. I cuz I I remember her saying, "No, I heard you calling me." But yeah. I don't I don't remember if she said that she was like, "Huh?" or something. Yeah. So then what happened with the phone? So then, should we call Lily? Okay, so I just called my sister because I couldn't remember exactly what happened or if she heard me. So she said that she actually heard my phone go off. And then she heard me say, "Lily, Lily." And that she said, "What?" And then she repeated, what, Karina? And that I didn't say anything after that. But if you ask me, I don't remember hearing Lily say anything. Like, so I like, didn't hear Lily's voice. That's crazy. So it's kind of like you were in your own little world. Yeah. Like I was in my own little sleep paralysis with the no, he's not. And Lily was in her own world where she heard my phone and she heard my voice and I didn't say anything. And we we're in the same room. That's fucking crazy. Okay. Yeah. I looked at my phone and I checked, like, I mean, who even texted me? And it was, sure enough, it was 3.15 and I had no messages, no alerts on my phone. Every time I hear your story, me da, like... Yeah. Mm. Every time I tell it, honestly, like, I feel like my voice even shakes because it was so... It was hard. Like, it was a... It was, it was I think, my first and only paranormal encounter like that. I'm sorry for having you relive it. You don't have to say it. No, it's okay. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. And I was actually, I just told your brother about this story. Remember like three weeks ago? Yeah, I thought about it. Honestly, that's why I was kind of like, let me look into shadow people. Because yeah. I've heard of shadow people, mm -hmm. but I've never went in debt. And I just go based on podcasts that I listen mm -hmm. to. But I actually watched um, Ancient Aliens for this episode. Mm hmm and some YouTube videos, and I gathered so much information. So it's season 18, episode 8, called The Shadow People. Pretty interesting. So on there, I learned that some accounts with these shadow figures also report a pulsating energy, glowing eyes, and electronic disturbances. That's crazy. Mm, yeah. It kind of made your phone go off at 315, yeah. like mimic yeah. a text message. And because it's discussed that aliens have powerful technology that can influence our electronics, some believe that aliens may be using some type of cloaking device to hide themselves from us. Now let's talk about how they could be from another dimension. Theorists believe that an interdimensional being has crossed over into our world. There's a theory that there are 10 dimensions. 
that someone from one of those dimensions bled into our planet, making them appear as a shadow because their energy doesn't adhere to the energy of our planet. But what doctors and scientists believe is that it's just our brain playing tricks on us. So there was a study done where a left part of the brain right above the ear was stimulated. The patient started to feel a mysterious shadow person next to her. Oh, that gave me chills. I know. The shadow was kind of mimicking her every movement. And doctors were also comparing the shadow people phenomenon to patients with schizophrenia, where they mistake their shadow or body as someone else. Like, I know I'm not schizophrenic. I see shadows. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> like, I know I'm that. Like, I'm not making this shit up. <laughs> I got this straight from Mental Health America because I did want to include this on here. Mm-hmm. And it's a screening you can do for yourself if you see ghosts or shadows. If you're seeing things that aren't there, it's important to ask yourself a few questions to find out if something more serious is going on. Does this happen often? Are you sure no one else is seeing it? Does seeing strange things bother you? Do you experience other things that are weird or hard to explain? Like hearing voices or feeling like people are watching you all the time? If the answer to the above questions are yes, then you might be struggling with the early signs of psychosis. Oh. I mean, well, then. In my I head, know. I'm like, yes, <laughs> yes. I mean, it's very serious. Yes, you do want to ask yourself these questions, but I know for a fact that I'm not mm-hmm. psychotic. Yeah, no, I don't think you're psychotic. I don't think so either. Now, I do find this kind of crazy because there are people out there that are born with gifts. Mm-hmm. Their third eye is activated and they can see more than what you and I can see. Your psychic mediums, you know, doctors that try to downplay, they like firmly believe in science. And I feel like they don't open up their mind for unexplainable things. Like they always want to mm-hmm. find a solution. Like they have a very logical way yes, of thinking. Very logical, which I get it. You know, that yeah. that's their doctors. I understand that. But it's good to have an open mind. At the end of the day, there will always be theorists, skeptics, and believers. But next time you see a shadow from your peripheral view, ask yourself, did I really see that? Or should I schedule an appointment with a doctor to be evaluated? <laughs> I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to schedule an appointment. I'll just live my life like this. <laughs> but I do I do personally believe in ghosts, shadows, and anything unexplained. Like, hello, that's why we have this podcast. Yeah. I've had experiences. I, I posted videos on my personal that were recorded mm-hmm. of things moving, things happening, mm-hmm. my dogs voices. reacting, voices. Mm-hmm, that one voice. Yeah, that said, hey. Oh, that was creepy. Yeah. Still have the video. So, No. Yeah. My, my brain is fine. And it's funny because me and you have experienced together. Yeah, in Mexico. Yeah, which is a story for a later time. I'm ready for your episode, Gary. All righty. So for my episode, we are going down to Argentina. Ooh. Mm-hmm. So today I'm going to be talking about La Recoleta Cemetery. I've never heard of that. I'm, I've never heard of that either. No, okay. But in my research, I was like, wait, this sounds interesting. The Recoleta Cemetery was built in 1880s and is named City of the Dead. The cemetery is literally like a small city with different pathways, street names, and there's even small plazas within the cemetery. It's made up of about 6,400 graves and is 14 acres. And it's a cemetery mostly for wealthy people. So most of the tombs are made of materials imported from Paris and Milan. And it's a touristy place. There's a lot of blogs on it and what to pack for a day at the cemetery. There's also guided tours and there's even a fee at the entrance. What's the fee? Like, Um, is it now? Now it's just like a tourist attraction? Because I really do want to know. Do people still bury their (laughs) people there? So apparently it's free for the residents, but... I believe foreigners have to pay like a $10 entrance. And as far as if people are still being buried there, I don't think people are buried there anymore. I think it's just more of a place to visit your loved ones that are there now. Or okay. just like for us, like just tourists that walk around. I don't know if there's any space to keep burying people, but I know you could still go visit. And it's like I said, there's a lot of wealthy people buried there, like famous artists and politicians and everything so people just go to visit their graves as well so it's pretty active yeah yeah got it 
Yeah, so maps are sold at the entrance where it shows you where each mausoleum is located. And mausoleums are defined as small stone buildings where coffins are kept. Often a whole family will be kept in a mausoleum. And I don't know if you remember, but the cemetery that we go to in Mexico kind of has that set of two where it's like little stone buildings or stone houses where the families are kept inside. Yeah, of them. Some have like some fancy ass houses. Yeah. So that's how it is here. Like some of them are super fancy and some of them are just what people could afford at that time. In Recoleta, there are several tombs that stand out. So there's a tomb of Liliana Crositi, who died on her honeymoon in Austria when she was struck by an avalanche. Her tomb is popular because it's a neo-Gothic style, so it's very different from the rest. It has a statue of her in her wedding dress, and she has her hand on her dog, Sabu, who passed away a couple of years after she did and was buried there with her. Supposedly, touching the dog's nose gives you good luck. And from the pictures I saw, his nose is like faded just from all the people that go and like rub his nose. I just Googled it. He looks to be a golden retriever. Yeah, like he looks very sweet. Yeah, I want to go. I love dogs. And the most popular tomb in Recoleta is that of Eva Perón. Her career started as an actress, and then she became the first lady of Argentina in 1946 when her husband, Juan Perón, was elected as president. Also, I looked up some pictures because I wanted to see what she looked like, and there were a lot of pictures of her corpse, so just a little warning there in case you're Googling her right now. Yeah, there's a lot of pictures of her after death. So... She was given the nickname Spiritual Leader of the Nation due to her activism in labor rights, women's suffrage, and overall fighting for the low income and middle class of Argentina. In 1952, she passed away of cancer at just 33 years old. What occurred after with her body is really complicated, but basically, for two years, her embalmed body was displayed in her headquarters. Then, in 1955, Juan Perón was overthrown by a military coup and fled the country, leaving Eva's body. No. Yeah. Her body was literally lost for about 16 years. Shut up. Yeah. When it was finally found again in Italy, it was under a false name. Her corpse was in pretty bad shape when they found it, almost as if it had been beaten. Her nose was crushed. Her fingers were missing. There was marks on her chest and her back. And you could say, well, she was dead. It had been 20 years, but they had preserved it in a way where, I mean, it was displayed for two years and it was in perfect condition. But nothing. So it should be in really good condition. Do you think it's because he fled whoever took over? Mm -hmm. Just, of course, didn't care and was like, get rid of this body and just shipped it off to wherever? Yeah. Some of it could be due just it wasn't cared for. Like I Mishandling. saw that. I saw that one of her feet was crushed pretty bad. And I think that was because it was kept at an upright position. So, I mean, all the, the weight was mm. on her foot. But they don't explain what happened as far as like her fingers seem they had been cut off. And, you know, with a dent in her nose and everything. So they're not really sure what happened. But you can just kind of years. assume. Mm -hmm. Got it. Yeah, That's her so sad. corpse was restored and now it lies five meters underground in the Recoleta Cemetery where her legacy continues. And she's the most popular tomb here because people really, really loved her. Now, just like you expect from any antique cemetery, there also lies a few haunted stories. And trigger warning, there is a story that contains suicide. So you can just skip this next part if you don't want to listen to it. David Ayeno worked in the cemetery as a guard for 30 years. It's said that his whole time working there, he saved his money to build his tomb there and even went to Genova, Italy to have his statue built. When his tomb and statue were ready, he headed home and he took his own life. Now, legend says that you can hear the sound of his keys walking along the cemetery streets just before dawn. So he pretty much planned Everything was planned yeah. for him. Mm -hmm. he everything was, was planned. He was getting everything ready for his family. Mm -hmm. It's like I, he, he worked for 30 years saving up his money to pay for his own tomb. And he even went to Italy to make a statue of himself. He has his uniform. And yeah, once all the details of his statue and his tomb were ready, he went and unalived himself. That is so sad. Yeah. I wonder, I wonder why... They hear his keys. I, I feel like he had a strong attachment to the cemetery. You work 30 years to be buried here. And even after life, you still want to be there almost. 
that's that's how I interpret it. It's like, wow, like he really loved this cemetery. That that makes a lot of sense. Mm-hmm. Why people would still hear his keys. Mm-hmm. Because he loved it so much. It's kind of like if he's still working Like he's there. still working, yeah. He's still yeah. guarding it even after that. That that makes sense. That sounds kind of peaceful. Yeah. It's like he's still doing what he wants to do in the afterlife. Another haunted story is that of the lady in white. There's different versions of this story, but they all base on a young man who met a beautiful girl around the streets near the cemetery. They went on a date, and since it was a cold day, he let her borrow his jacket And they ended the night with him dropping her off at home. When he returned to her house the next day to ask for the jacket, the girl's mother informed him that her daughter had actually passed away years ago and was buried at the Recoleta Cemetery. And to his surprise, when he found her grave, there was his jacket covering the statue of a beautiful girl named Luz Maria. So he pretty much went on a date with the ghost? Yes. Yeah. That's crazy. There's always a lady in white. Yeah. (laughs) And I feel like, this happens a lot. Mm-hmm. There, I've heard other stories very similar to this. I wonder how he felt. I don't know. There was different versions where some of them said that he went crazy. Um, but, you know, it's a lot of legends. A lot or, of yeah, a lot of legends. I couldn't find too much information on Luz Maria. I did find pictures of her statue. I just know that her name was Luz Maria and that she passed away of leukemia at only 15 years old. So this is... Real, like this is a true story. This really did happen to the guy, but the whole legend of him going crazy that is not, yeah, that's not. But you can find this story anywhere. Oh, shit. there's statues of the girl, and the mm-hmm. guy legit said that this happened to him, or does this story come from her mom? It's a legend, yeah, okay. Yeah, I couldn't find the guy's name or anything. Like, if you look up Luz Maria Recoleta Cemetery, that's all the stories that you'll read. Uh-huh. It's about this guy that met her. Yeah. So, I don't know. I mean, I don't know if the mom said it, if he said it somewhere. I searched for this story on Reddit and TikTok just to see, like, what people were, were saying. And there were several accounts of people saying that they've seen this lady in white, either by driving by or walking around the cemetery. So, she's... I would say she's like a popular ghost around there. The lady in white and the the guard that walks around with his keys. Do you remember that? Was it a TikTok or Facebook of a cemetery where there is a little girl? I think she was like two years old. And you can clearly see it on camera. And she's playing. You can see where someone like a ghost comes and holds her hand and they walk together and then they disappear. It was pretty recent. Mm-hmm. No, it I went, it that. circulated all over. I don't know if it was Facebook or TikTok, mm-hmm. but it was everywhere that even the mom said, that's my daughter. And it happened recently, maybe 20. So it was a girl ghost. A little girl. She was like maybe three, four years old. She was little. And then it was an older mm-hmm. ghost. So it kind of reminded me of that where, well, this cemetery had cameras. Mm-hmm. That's how they captured it because apparently... There was a grave that every time they went, Mm -hmm. there was flowers missing or something to that. There was something going on with that grave. Mm -hmm. And they put a camera and that's where they saw that it was the little girl ghost. It was two. Yes, I do remember. I do remember them saying that flowers were missing. Yeah, yeah, I remember this. It It was was one of the two. I can't remember Mm -hmm. if the little girl was playing with it because they thought that it was like they were doing it to be mean. Mm -hmm. And then they put a camera and then they see the ghost of the little girl. And then there was another ghost, but they yeah. walk together and then they disappear. Yeah. I wonder if they did have video camera or recordings, mm-hmm. would they capture? Yeah. Yeah, it's worth kind of looking into and seeing if there's any real life footage of, of anything that happens. But I'm telling you, the TikTok comments were like, I saw her when I turned on this street or I was in my car mm-hmm. and I saw her while I was driving. So, yeah. Also, I thought it was funny that this case included the names of my sister and my mom because you don't hear their names often. And these cases, I found my sister's name and my mom's full name. (laughs) And I was like, how weird is that? (laughs) That is. And I didn't didn't even, it didn't, it didn't click. I think we did great. I think this episode was good. I enjoyed the stories. I learned something new with your story. I had no idea, like your personal encounter. Mm That's what I'm trying to say. Like, I had no idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I learned what I might have seen, which is a question that I had in my mind all the time. Like, did I see a demon? 
it wasn't a ghost. I know it was not a ghost. Well, actually, I can't say it wasn't a ghost. I, I think it was it something was, demonic, It gave me definitely. something more negative. You yes. know, it didn't feel like just a person, a ghost person standing there. Yeah. So the glowing red eyes do tend to feed off of your fear. Yeah. And, and I was like it. scared shitless. Like I was, if, if that, if it feeds off of my fear, I can see how it was. I mean, even building up the two weeks that I couldn't sleep, I feel like maybe it was just building up and this had to happen. Mm-hmm. You know, that's why I never watched Insidious. After you told me how scary it was yeah. and every day you were scared. Because I remember you going to the house and you were even scared at the house. Yeah. And then you tell me what happens and I'm like, mm-hmm. I'm never going to watch that movie. I know. And I I didn't mention this, but even after it took me a while to recover from what happened. Oh my God. Can you please mention it? Yeah. How yeah. you were sleeping so, with Lily? Because you're right. Okay. So after what happened... I slept with my sisters like in our little twin bed for, I don't know, maybe a week straight. And even she was really scared. Like she told me that she went to tell my mom, hey, you need to do something about Karina because I'm scared to sleep with her. She said that, I mean, you know, whenever you're falling asleep and you jump Mm -hmm. or like you you have that dream of when you're falling and you jump in bed. Well, my sister said that my body would literally jump from the bed. Like she could feel my body like rising and boom, kind of like levitating, like if you were getting picked up and dropped. Yeah. So she said she could feel that. And then that's whenever she started getting very scared. So my mom was like, okay, this wasn't just a regular nightmare that she's going to recover from. How old were you guys? I was like 18. Yeah. I was like 18. Lily Lily was 15, probably. That's probably why she's very miedosa. Yeah. And so if you know, you know, my mom took me to a curandera. Mm -hmm. Me curaron de espanto. Mm -hmm. And after that, I mean, I can't say the fear went away, but I could say I was able to rest. I was able to have a full night's sleep after that. Well, that's crazy. We're going to stop talking, yapping our mouth, because this episode is actually going to be a little bit longer than usual. And we need to put an end to it because we have many stories. We have personal encounters and we don't want to give them all in one episode, right? Right. And we want to listen to your stories. So if you guys have stories, any paranormal encounters, anything that you want us to talk about and read in our podcast, please send them to us. Our Gmail is something ominous pod at gmail.com. And then you can also follow us on Instagram at something ominous podcast. And then TikTok is only something ominous. Not the word only, but like (laughs) don't put podcast in there. (laughs) It's just something ominous. We don't have any TikToks up yet, but we're really working hard on some content and just getting a little creative. Yeah, we have a lot of good ideas and new content coming up. So please follow us and yeah, stay tuned for that. And rate us, please. Yes, give tell us a five star. Everybody, rating. tell your friends, tell your family, post us. Thank you everyone for listening to episode three. Bye. Bye. Bye.